Hello children, welcome to my YouTube channel. As usual, today I'm going to discuss a past paper. So this is for your first semester examination, which will be held uh, in March, right? So I selected the past paper. It is uh, from 2022 March. So out of the two papers in this video, I'm planning to discuss uh, paper one, you know that not like in grade six, from grade seven onwards, uh, first semester, semester examination, you will be having two papers, right? Paper one and paper two. And you will be having the, the different set of instruction for each paper. So you want to be mindful when you are doing the paper. So read the instruction carefully and uh, write your answers, record your answers accordingly, right? Without wasting the time, I'm moving uh, to the paper. So the paper one, we have three parts. Part A, right? So first we will have an idea about it. Part A, then we do have part B, and then we do have part C. So these are the three parts we have in the paper one. So we'll start from part A. And before that, I'll quickly go through that the main important uh, the point or the instruction you want to follow that is record your answers in the spaces provided in this paper. That means you are not allowed to use the uh, line papers. Line papers in the sense of papers that which you receive from your teachers in the exam hall. For this paper, you are not allowed to write the answers on those line papers. Instead, you want to write the answers in this paper itself. So why I'm specifying and why I'm highlighting this point, children, because, right, so when you are uh, writing the answers that you can see that you have very limited space. So then when you are writing the answers, you should be able to manage the spaces given, right? So we'll move to the first question in part A, that 47% as a decimal. Now, you have learned this. When you are writing a percentage into a decimal, uh, converting into a decimal, so we want to do something. First of all, we want to write this percentage as a fraction. How? 47% per 100. Then we'll get the hidden decimal. For that is 47.0 over 100. Now you have a decimal number. And it is divided by 100. And you know when you are dividing a decimal number by 10, 100 and 1000, what happened? So you have learned this in grade 6 uh, decimal lesson, right? So then what happened? It becomes the, the 0 0.470. And no need of writing that the 0 at the end. Therefore, I conclude my answer 0 0.47. Hope it is clear for all of you. What I did, that 47% first I wrote as a fraction, right? So then I have the numerator and the denominator. Then I found the hidden decimal man in the numerator. So then it becomes 47.0. Now it is a decimal number and I am dividing that decimal number by 100. And when we are dividing a decimal number by 100, that for your easy reference, we say, we say that when we are dividing, the decimal man is moving uh, to the left side, two steps as we have two zeros. But you want to keep in your mind that decimal man is or the decimal point is not moving anywhere. When you go to your higher grades and when you are doing mathematics for your higher studies, you, you will learn that it is not moving anywhere. Only the digit values will be changing. But for easy reference, we are telling that the decimal point is moving to the left when we are dividing. As here we have 100 that we want to move two steps to the left side. So then it becomes 0 0.470. No point of writing 0 at the end. Therefore, you can conclude the answer 0 0.470. Four, right. So then we'll move to question number uh, two. Question number two, children, you have a negative index. So when you have the negative index, first of all, you want to convert this into positive index. How do you convert the negative index into positive index, children? You want to get the reciprocal of this number. So this is how we get the reciprocal 1 over 
4 to the power 1, right? So then the one no, that 4 to the power negative 1 will become 4 to the power positive 1. So when you are getting the reciprocal, you know that 2 to the power 1, it is equal to 2. So then 3 to the power 1, it is equal to 3. So then the x to the power 1, it is equal to x. Then m to the power 1, it is equal to m. Now, when you have the index 1, always your answer will be equal to the base cell. Here also, you have the same kind of question that 1 over 4 to the power 1 means 1 over 4. Some of you, you uh, that you may have written like this. Or you may have written 0 0.25. So the both answers will be accepted if you have written either 1.4 or sorry, 1 over 4 or 0 0.25. Both the answers will be accepted. And you don't want to write both. I'm telling that either 1 over 4 or 0 0.25 will be the correct answer. So then the next question it is from the square root lesson. And you can see, children, that uh, first of all, I will expand this how that the 100 times x squared, right? So then what I do, I segregate that the square root of 100 and square root of x squared. Square root of 100, what is the value, children? It is 10, right? Then when you have x squared and when you get the square root of that, it will become x. So then what will be the answer? 10x. I repeat that here they have given 100x squared. What I did, I expanded 100 times x squared. And both of them are in the square root side, right? So then I segregated them, square root of 100 and square root of x squared. So then square root of 100 will become 10 and x squared when you get the square root it becomes x so then 10 times x it is 10x right so then we'll move to question number four then here you have 10 to the power negative 2 now already you know that when you have the negative index what you want to do and children I will do something here that later I will uh, erase this if you are doing this in the paper two, this is how you want to do it. First, you convert like this, one over 10 to the power two, then you have one over 100, right? So then the next step, you write 8.25 and multiply it by one over 100. So then this become 8.25 divided by 100. When you are dividing a decimal number by 100 that we discuss again this uh, concept that what will happen to the decimal point. So this becomes 0 0.0825, right? So then we take space and we do this with steps nicely, right? So if that this question uh, we can find in paper two. But here the problem is children, we don't have that much of space to do everything that we have a that uh, small line to write everything. So then how we are going to manage the space, right? See that this is the talent you should have. And this is the uh, skill you want to improve. That when you have this kind of thing, that you know this is how you want to write the answer. These are the steps. But now we have the question in paper one. Therefore, we want to manage the space. So see how I'm going to write it. 8.25 and I write that 1 over 100. Straight away I write it, right? That I'm not taking that 10 to the power negative 2, 1 over 10 to the power 2, then 1 over 10 to the power means 1 over 100. I'm not writing all that straight away I'm getting that 8.25 I multiply by 1 over 100. That, that means I can divide 8.25, I can divide by 100 and see that what happened to my uh, the handwriting size also. Then I have to manage that I can't write the handwriting or the numbers like earlier. So then I have to change it. So then what happened? I want to move that just two, two steps right to the left side as I'm dividing now. So then it will become 0 0.0825, right? So then you don't want to write this. I just showed you this is how you want to do when you are uh, having this kind of question in paper two, right? 
So then if you want to cross check whether your answer is correct children, you can do it like this. You just see that the earlier the decimal point was here. Now it has come two steps. Yes, yes. I have done it correctly. So likewise, you can cross check. Okay. So then we'll move to the next question, children. It's about the area, area of a triangle. And here that it's a tricky question because they have given all the three sides, right, to mislead you. That if you don't know that what is area and what is perimeter, definitely you will get this wrong because they have given all the information, right? So you want to have an idea that what is the area of a triangle and we do have a specific formula for that. First, we will write that area of a triangle. How do you write this? Area is half into base into, right, the perpendicular height, okay? Okay. So then we, uh, that first we want to identify, we have a specific formula for this that is done. So then we want to identify which is the base and which is the perpendicular height. You can understand this is a right angle angle. In a right angle triangle children, so then the side which is exactly opposite to the right angle, we have a specific name that is we call the hypotenuse. But here that we don't want to include the hypotenuse value because it is not available in the area formula. Instead, we do have the base and the perpendicular height. So what you want to do in the exam, you want to show. So this is my base value, right? You write this. This is base value. And that is what I represent. That it is represented by capital B. So then here you write the perpendicular height, right? Perpendicular height. Now you can substitute the value half into 6 centimeter base into 8 centimeter perpendicular height. Right. Now here that when you are simplifying children, again you have two methods. That one child can do this 6 times 8, it is 48. 48 centimeter square divided by 2. Then he can get, it, get the answer 24 centimeter square. That is also correct. Or else another child then uh, can get this 2 times 1 and 2 times 3, then 3 times 8, 24, and you write 24 centimeters square. Both ways are correct, right? Whatever the method you have done, so then you can uh, mark your answer, right? So then either you can first simplify the numerators, that is 6 times 8, it is 48. And then that 48 will be divided by 2. Then you get the answer 24. Or else you can simplify like this. That 2 times 1 and 2 times 3 is 6. So then 3 times 8 24. You can use either way. It doesn't matter. Right. So both the methods are correct. So then we'll move to question number 6 children. 3 to 9. That you have a ratio. Right. The ratio. The relationship between two items. That 3 to 9. That hope you have an idea about the ratio lesson. So the, for an example, if you are talking about the number of milk powder spoons and the number of sugar spoons. So then here they say that if I am putting that, if I am using three milk powder spoons, then I want to use nine sugar spoons, right? So likewise that they are talking about a relationship between two items, right? So then we want to simplify. What do you mean by the simplification children that you are making it? It's smaller, right? So to make it smaller, you want to divide. For that, you want to identify a number which you can divide both the items. 3 and 9, both numbers you can divide by 3. So then it will be that you can write it like this. You divide by 3, right? So then you write the answer 1, 2, 3. So this is the answer, the uh, simplest version, because we can't simplify this further, right? 3 times 1, 3, 3 times 3, 9. Okay, done. So then question number 7, in question number 7, that you have a simple uh, algebraic equation, 6x equal to 1, and you know 6x means 6 times x equal to 1, and you want to find the value of x, right? So then for that, you want to send that 6 to the other side. The multiplication 6, when you are sending, what will happen, children? So it becomes division 6. The answer will be x equal to 1 over 6, right? So then we'll move to the uh, last question on this pa the page. So it is, and it is a geometric question. And you can see a straight line and 
angles on it. What is the rule we do have? Can you remember children? So then we have that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, right? Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So this is the theory behind this question, right? Based on that, what you want to do that you write B plus 129 degrees should be equal to 180. Now here in the question, they have asked you to find the value B giving the reasons now. So then inside the bracket, you write angles, right, on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. Children, here I want to mention you that you don't want to write that the whole thing, angles on a straight line add up to 180. Why is that? Because already you have shown that add up to 180 part with the formula. B plus 129 is equal to 180. That means that you have shown it. You just write the reason angles on a straight line. Add up to 180 part I have done. So then I want to keep B here alone. For that, I want to send 129 to the other side. What will happen? It becomes negative 129. So then I go to my working column, 180. Then I have 129. So then what will be the answer? 10 minus 9, it is 1. 7 minus 2, it is 5. So then the answer will be 51. So then the B is equal to 51 degrees. Okay. So this is... Uh, question number eight and page one. So then we'll move to uh, the next second page also. It is uh, from your first chapter, right? The working with numbers. Can you remember that when you have the same base value and you have the multiplication, same base value, what you're going to do, children, you can add the indices. How we are going to add the indices, you write the base value and here you write three plus two so then the answer is 5 to the power 5, right? What I did, first I want to realize that these two numbers are written in index form and I want to multiply them. When I look at the base value, the both base values are equal. When I have the same base value and if it is a multiplication, simply what I can do, children, I can add the indices. What do you mean by indices? That is the plural word of index, right? Okay. So then 5 to the power 5 and we want to keep the answer in index form. So that is done. Then question number 10, you want to find the area of this parallelogram. Children, can you remember the formula, the area of a parallelogram? How do you find that? The base multiply by the perpendicular height. Again, after writing the formula, you go to the diagram and you want to understand what is the base and what is the perpendicular height? So this should be the base value, right? You can mark them uh, in the diagram, children. So this is the perpendicular height. And how do you write this? 10x multiplied by 4x and they have not given the units. We don't know. So then how can I do this? I can write that the 10 and 4 closer because they are numbers Then the x and x closer. So my answer will be 40x squared, right? 10 times 4, 40, x times x, x squared. So that uh, this is what I can do that I can't give you the exact uh, numerical answer for this because I don't know the value of x, right? And they have not mentioned the units also, whether it is millimeter, centimeter, we don't know, right? Okay, so we'll move to the next question. So again, it is from the index lesson. And children, can you remember 2 to the power 0, it is 1. And when you have 3 to the power 0, it is 1. 5 to the power 0, it is 1. x to the power 0, it is 1. m to the power 0, it is 1. What does this mean? That when you have the 0 index, whatever the base value, you have the answer 1. Right here they have given 7 to the power 0. So then the answer should be that here you write 7 to the power 0 is equal to 1. And 7 to the power 2 is equal to what? 7 multiplied by 7. Right? So then 7 multiplied by 7 it is 49. Then you can write this 1 plus 
49 and the final answer will be 50. Right, 7 times 7 it is 49. 7 to the power 0 is 1. 1 plus 49 it is 50. So then we'll move to question number 12. So what does this mean? 0 0.4 to the power 2. What does that mean? You want to multiply 0 0.4 two times, right? 0 0.4 two times. Can you remember that we have learned this when you were in grade 6, that when you are multiplying two decimal numbers, first you just multiply the numbers that 4 times 4, it is 16, right? Here you have one decimal place and here you have one decimal place. Therefore, your answer should be with two decimal places. So how do you keep the answer? It should be 0 0.16. It should be 0 0.16. 4 times 4, it is 16. That is true. But here we don't have 4 times 4. Instead, we do have 0 0.4 times 0 0.4. So then your answer should be with two decimal places. So then 16 with two decimal places, how can I write? 0 0.16, right? So then we'll move to question number 13. Uh, so then what you want to do, you want to find the C value, right? So then 1 plus 3C equal to 10 and you keep 3C here and you send that positive one to the other side, what will happen, children? It becomes negative 1. As I don't have enough space with an arrow, I'll bring it here. So then my answer will be 3C is equal to 9. What do you mean by 3C, children? 3 times C. 3 times C is equal to 9. Then C is equal to 9 divided by 3. So then I'll bring my answer here. Then C is equal to 3. It is simple, right? So you should be able to show the steps. Now, this is the space I have. So then I somehow I want to manage it, right? So then I did it with all the steps. So then I don't get the wrong answer because I have followed the correct steps that according to the uh, method that first I remove one and I bring that number one to the other side, then it becomes negative one. 10 minus one, it becomes nine. Then 3C is equal to 9. What do you mean by 3C? 3 times C. So then I want to keep C along. For that, I want to send 3 to the other side. The multiplication 3 when I'm sending, it becomes division 3. So then 9 divided by 3, the answer is 3. Right. So then we'll move to the question number uh, 14 here that you have uh, a compound shape. Can you remember what is a compound shape? So when you are having a single shape that you have the formula. If it is a square, you know what to do. If it is a rectangle, you know what to do. Then we had uh, parallelograms, rectangles, sorry, the triangles. Uh, we had then the, we discuss about the circles that we had specific formula for each shape. But here the problem is children, we have two shapes together, right? So then if you have two or more shapes together, we call them that the compound shape and how we are going to find the area of a compound shape children, we want to segregate. Here it is easier for me, I segregate it like this. So this is the bigger one and this is the second one. How do you find this? That I find that the area of one. How I'm going to do that? One is that here you can write one is a rectangle. You just see that how I'm uh, showing that the, my answers clear that two is what? It is a square, right? So then here I write area of one is equal to length into width. Then I write eight centimeter into six centimeters. So then my answer is 48 centimeter squared, I mark this as 1, right? Then I write the area of 2. That area of 2, it is a square, therefore it is length into length. How I'm going to write it? 2 centimeter into 2 centimeter. So then my answer will be 4 centimeter squared and I mark this as 2. So then the total area See how I'm managing the space. Then total area will be 1 plus 2, right? So then here you write that the 48 
plus 4. So that becomes 52 centimeters square. See how I manage the space children, right? So I have done everything within the given limited space, right? I didn't miss any of the steps, but I manage the space that sometimes I have to uh, reduce my the hand, uh, letter size and I have to that uh, use the, the corner size, but I manage the space given, right? That six times eight, it is 48. Two times two, it is four. Then when you add 48 and 4 together, it becomes 52. The total area of this figure is 52 centimeter square. And then here, we want to find the gradient and the y-intercept C of this line. What is the general formula for, uh, for a straight line, children? It is y equal mx plus C format. First of all, when you have this kind of question, what you want to do, please look at the formula whether it is following this formula that the, with the, this style that is y equal mx plus c format sometimes you may get questions the formula is given but that formula is not according to the y equal mx plus c format in that case what you want to do you want to modify the given formula but here that we don't want to do that they have given it according to the y equal mx plus c format therefore easily we can find so this is the gradient that m is equal to 2 and this is the y intercept therefore c is equal to negative 3 right so the gradient m is 2 and the y intercept c is negative 3 right so then we'll move to the last question of part A, 500 grams as a percentage of 2 kilograms. 500 grams as a percentage of 2 kilograms. And you want to give this as a percentage. So then you know that you can't do anything when you have the two different units. First of all, you want to do the conversion. You know that the one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Therefore, you convert two kilograms into grams. So how do you do that? Five grams divided by 2,000 grams. You multiply by 100. And that here that the gram and gram we can cancel. So then we have two zeros and two zeros we cancel and this zero and this zero cancel. Then we have 50 over 2 percent. Final answer should be 25 percent. Okay, so that is that part A that we discuss part A of the paper one. So this is March 2022 first semester examination paper. Paper 1, Part A. I'm slowly moving the screen that again you can mark your answers or else you can uh, pause the video and check your answers. And if you have any doubt, you can comment on this video and you, you have that during this weekend, you can clarify whatever the doubts you have. So you just uh, mention it in the comment section. So then I'll uh, try my best to clarify your doubts before the exam. So I'll slowly move the screen. You just see and uh, how I have managed the space and how I have written the answers ne neatly and how I have brought all the concepts correctly, right? So this is how you want to write the answers. So then I will discuss the part B uh, with another video because uh, this will be longer, right? So then Keep in touch. I will bring you the, the paper one, part two. That means part B uh, with another video. Till then, you can go through these 16 questions and be thorough with the concepts we discussed. And uh, we'll see that how we can write the answers for part B. Okay, children. So then we'll meet again with the part B. Keep in touch. Then you can find the part B answers too.